Welcome to the Oak Lords YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to be making something that I have been asked about every week for months. The tutorial that has been the most requested is the Bobby Boxy Crossbody Bag. You guys, this is such a fun bag to make with clear vinyl. It's so quick. It takes very little, little amount of resources and it was created by my own mom. We all call her Bobby. So this is my mom, Bobby. She is the creator of the bag. Say hi, Bobby. Hello. She came up with this bag. Honestly, why did you come up with this bag? Because of Sandy. Oh, that's right. Our neighbor, Sandy, she had to go to a, was it a sports event? Yeah, she goes to all kinds of sports and, and uh, concerts. and. Now, so she had to go to an event mm -hmm. where she needed a clear bag and she didn't have a clear bag. So my mom whipped up a little crossbody bag for her. Our neighbor, Sandy, she loves it. Mm -hmm. So we decided to just keep making them. And now Bobby makes these in so many different beautiful vinyls. Uh, honestly, right now, we're going to be selling some in the shop very soon. Uh, and the most requested one is totally clear. Yeah. So totally clear vinyl, or you can use a fun vinyl that has prints all over it. So not only is this one of the most requested videos that I've gotten lately, this is also month number one of the Bag Making Bees Club. This is another amazing subscription box. It is a monthly subscription box. It's hosted by Gabby over at Wonderground Fabrics, and it is a mystery box once again. So every month you will have a big goodie box full of everything you'll need to make that pattern that month. I will be working with her on most of the months where I pick the pattern. We all get together and pick the materials. It is such a fun effort. It, it's just so fun. So all of this here and some more is what will be in the box for this month. And not only will you have enough material to make one Bobby Boxy crossbody, you're also going to have enough material to make a Bobby Boxy pouch. So this bag has this beautiful clear vinyl with these different multicolored starbursts. We have this amazing cork tag from Jade over at Hardwood and Hyde. Bobby, put your hands down. Come on. <laughs> we have this amazing cork tag right here, which is printed from Jade over at Hardwood and Hyde. We have this beautiful zipper. We also have this fun little tag over here, a little bee. This is also from Hardwood and Hyde. We have the crossbody strap, and then something actually new to me are these Chicago screws right here. These are not rivets, these are little Chicago screws. And the reason, come out mom, come out. So we wanted to use Chicago screws for this because I know not all of you guys have rivets. However, I do want to mention that this box with Wonderground Fabrics, the Bag Making Bees Club, this is more for a confident beginner intermediate. So in the future, there will be rivets included and we will kind of assume that you have a rivet press. But for box number one, and because this is the Bobby box, we want to make sure everybody can be a part of it. Uh, we are using these awesome Chicago screws, which were custom made just for this box this month. So not only do you have everything to make this as well as a pouch, you also are going to have a little honey sucker. Yeah, <laughs> touched it. She touched it with her tongue. <laughs> You're gonna have a fun little bag making bee club sticker. Don't lick that, Mom. <laughs> and probably the coolest thing ever. You're gonna have a whole roll of thread. Now let me see. This is the color is mermaid. You can see beautiful colors. It is a nylon bonded thread. So this is a little different than what I've used before. It is a nylon bonded thread. It is a Tex 45 weight thread. I do believe this will be fine in most domestic sewing machines. I would not use it in your bobbin if you have a domestic sewing machine. I found thread like this unravels a lot in the bobbin and you really have to mess with like the tension of the winding of the bobbin. So I like to use this in the top thread and then just use regular Guterman thread in the bobbin. So thank you so much to Bobby for allowing us to use your pattern in today's tutorial. Bobby's been coming up with all kinds of fun patterns lately. You've made the Bobby Boxy pouch. Now you have the Bobby Boxy crossbody. Bobby, what do we have coming next? The, whatchamacallit. That's not your pattern though. I know. What are you gonna come up with next? You gotta irk me. <laughs> so all I gotta do is be real irritating That's and then she right. gets mad and she comes up with a fun That's pattern. Right. So help me with that guys. Be nice, <laughs> but let's irritate her enough to get a new pattern out of her. Thank you also to Gabby and Jade for letting me be a part of this awesome box. This is so fun. You guys, I hope you feel super spoiled by this. So much love has gone into this from so many different people and I have a little preview of some of the future months and if you guys like this, just wait. We just wait for the future months. They're so good. If you're new to the Oak Lords YouTube channel, please consider clicking what, mom? Subscribe. You get a point. Oh, subscribe. No. Okay. There. Okay. You could have a lot of outtakes. <laughs> please subscribe. <laughs> to anything. <laughs> if at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, leave them down in the comments section. Any cool bags you want to see Bobby come up with, leave them down in the comment section. 
I will have timestamps running along the bottom of the screen. So if you're just looking for one part, like how do I get this D ring installed into the top? We will have timestamps for that down below. I will warn you, sewing this box top right here with the D ring holders is the most challenging part, but I will do my best to provide you with lots of tips and suggestions for changes if you want. Uh, but it is the most challenging part. If you've worked with clear vinyl before, you know that it can be sticky. Again, we will give you lots of tips along the way. All right, guys, what do we say, Mom? I don't know, goodbye. No, we're not, we're not <laughs> done with the video. <laughs> we say, let's get started. Oh, let's get started. There we go, let's get started. <laughs> All right, so the pattern pieces for this are pretty much the same as the Bobby Boxy pouch. The only difference is we're gonna be adding a couple of little tabs for our D-rings. So. For the front of the bag, we have a front top and a front bottom. The front top is measured at eight and a half inches wide by three inches tall. The front bottom is measured at eight and a half inches wide by six and a half inches tall. The back is measured at eight and a half inches wide by 10 and a quarter inches tall. To install the zipper, you're going to have some zipper binding here. This will probably come as a strip that's about one inch wide, nine inches long. Uh, just cut it in half. So we want two pieces that are half of an inch thick and nine inches long. This needs to be some sort of vinyl, something that does not fray. Do not use quilt cool cotton for this. And then you're also gonna have a cut for a little pull tab. This is fun if you wanna add a little charm or just make it easier to open and close the bag. This is half of an inch by two inches. Again, vinyl, something that has raw edges. It's good to go. And then finally, we have our two cuts for our D-rings. This does need to be some sort of a vinyl. Uh, I would suggest clear vinyl works. However, let me tell you, when we sew this, we have a lot of layers of clear vinyl we'll be sewing through. And while you might be able to make the bottom of the sewing machine and your presser foot nonstick, when your needle goes through this many layers of sticky vinyl, it tends to get stuck. So I'm going to do my best to walk you through it. However, if you have scraps of other material like this vinyl here and you want to use that instead i do believe it'll make it easier because the fewer layers of clear vinyl the better so if instead you have some scraps of vinyl that are just regular vinyl not sticky or anything like that you could use those for the d-ring straps instead however i will be showing you how to use the clear ones because that's what we use when we make the bobby boxy crossbodies so here's our hardware for the bag. You're going to need some webbing. I like to have it about 52 to 60 inches long, depending on how long you really like your crossbody straps. Some zipper tape is good. We're using a number five zipper tape. At least nine inches would be nice. We want it to be a little bit longer, a little bit wider than the material we're working with. So that way if there's like a little bit of shifting, we can trim it down easily. You're gonna need a zipper pull to go with it. There's really cute zipper pulls with this box, guys. I hope you love them. You're gonna need your bag tag now. If you got the box, you have the most amazing little bee bag that says beautiful. I mean, this is the cutest, scrumptious little guy ever. However, I have misplaced my extra bag tags with this one. So instead, we will be using another amazing bag tag from Jade over at the Heartwood and Hide. And this one says so into you, which I think also works fantastic with this bag. We have two one inch swivel hooks, two one inch D rings, a one inch slider. This is all for the crossbody strap. And then custom made Chicago screws that are little tiny stars. They are very, very small Chicago screws because we wanna make sure that they weren't too big. So with Chicago screws, you need to make sure that the, 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 the distance between the back of the screw and the front of the screw isn't so big because then it will wiggle around. So we're gonna use these. They are a tight fit, but I'm gonna walk you through it. All right, here's all the other stuff. As I mentioned, if you got the box, you got this beautiful thread. That's what we'll be using in the top of the thread today. In the bobbin, I like to use just the regular Guterman. I don't like to use the thicker thread in my bobbin on my domestic machine. If I was using my industrial machine, then I could definitely put this in the bobbin. However, on my domestic, it's no good. So I use a Guterman thread in the bobbin. Double-sided tape is very, very helpful today. Either an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch double-sided tape, something you can easily sew over. Since we have such sticky, sticky vinyl, I am going to be using special needles today. This is the super non-stick needle from Schmetz and it is size 9014. It's not perfect, but it doesn't break. That's my experience. If you use a smaller needle, like a regular Microtex 8012, with the number of layers of clear vinyl in this needle sticking, they have a tendency to break. So this makes it a little bit easier. Next, I have my marking tools. I have a vinyl marking tool, which is always great with the vinyl. And then I also have a air racing marking tool. Pretty much I just want a black tool because sometimes it can be kind of hard to see the silver depending on the color of your vinyl. So I always like to have a black pen available as well. A small one inch by six inch ruler is gonna be very handy. 
screws for the Chicago screws, also some Beacon 3-in-1 glue. We're gonna use this to glue the screws in, and then a hole punch is helpful, and then a good selection of clips. When we make these crossbody bags to sell in the shop, instead of Chicago screws, we use rivets. I just use these size medium rivets. These are from Emmeline Bags. Uh, we use rivets and we install the strap hardware that way. I'm gonna show you how to do both. So on one side of the bag, I'm going to use the Chicago screws. On the other side of the bag, I'm gonna show you exactly what I do every week to make the strap connected to the bag using rivets, which, which I really love. I love rivets. So if you have rivets for this um, and you wanna give this a shot, this is a great time to do it. I also prefer to use this rivet setting tool. This is not the right die, but I like to use this rivet setting tool because I have to like get into the bag and it's very challenging to do that with a tabletop press. So I recommend this and the rivets and the hole punch if you're gonna be doing it that way. So if you've made the Bobby Boxy pouch, this is exactly the same. There's only one change of how we install the strap. So if you wanna skip ahead, make sure you utilize those timestamps. This is your first time or you just wanna watch the whole thing. I will walk you through the entire process. So the first thing I need to do is put my zipper pull on my zipper tape. And remember, I'm using a number five zipper tape and this is plastic tape so I can easily sew over it. So once I have the zipper pull installed, I like to grab some double-sided tape and I'm going to add the double-sided tape right on the edge of the zipper tape. I mean, right on the edge. We don't want any of this to be seen in the end. You can do this for the top and the bottom, both sides. So now we'll just work on this one side at a time. Let's do the bottom first. I'm gonna remove the paper from the tape. Then I'm gonna take my bottom front clear vinyl piece and I'm just gonna center it on my zipper tape and the top edge of my clear vinyl is gonna line up with the top edge of my tape. It's not gonna go past that. It's gonna just line up right on that top edge. See, we don't want the clear vinyl too close to the zipper teeth because we still need to use the binding piece to cover this as well and that will be closer to the zipper teeth. So now I'm gonna sew this down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. To help us get set up with the clear vinyl, we can add some of just regular scotch tape and I'll show you where I like to put it. I like to put it on the metal part of my bed. Try not to tape down your threads. So you see I'm putting it just all around the feed dogs. I don't wanna put it on the feed dogs, obviously, but I wanna put it all around it. There we go. And then I'm gonna be starting with my zipper foot. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on my zipper foot as well because metal likes to stick to that clear vinyl. And then I can just grab some little snips here where my needle's gonna be going in and out just so it doesn't get caught up on it. There we go. So now once it's installed, I can just baste on. All right, we have this basted down. I will be honest, this double-sided tape I'm using is a little too sticky for what I'm doing today. So I'm gonna switch over to the wash away, the Wonder Tape wash away. Uh, it's not as sticky, but it makes it a lot easier to uh, sew over. So I'm actually gonna replace this one with the wash away. The thing is, we're gonna be layering up our double-sided tape, so we, we don't need more things to wrestle with. So now I'm going to attach the top the same way. So let's remove the paper. And now this time, the bottom edge of the top vinyl, make sure if you have a directional print, you think about that. The bottom edge is going to line up with the bottom edge of the double-sided tape, just right along that, not too close to the zipper teeth. Also make sure you're centering it with the sides of the bottom. So I actually like to use the grid marks on my cutting mat to help with that. There we go, so just center it and stick it down. And now let's baste along this edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, basting that on was much easier. So now grab your zipper bindings and let's flip them wrong side up, so upside down. Then take your double-sided tape and let's just go right down the center of the back of our binding pieces. Now take one of your binding pieces and we'll start on the bottom again. Remove the paper from your tape. And now with our binding, we wanna center it over that raw edge of the clear vinyl. So this can get pretty close to the zipper teeth. Make sure you're also centering it over your clear vinyl. It should overextend just a little bit. There we go. So you might wanna move your zipper out of the way a little bit. Make sure it's nice and straight. There we go. So now let's grab your other piece of binding and do the same thing to the top of the zipper tape. And the whole point of this binding is to cover up the raw edge of our clear vinyl and the tape and the stitches, it just cleans it up, it makes it look nice and neat. So now we're going to top stitch along the bottom and top edge of each of these zipper bindings at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All 
All right, so as you saw, as I was top stitching, I went ahead and basted over the edges of my zipper teeth as well, so that way I don't have to worry about the zipper coming off. Now I can just trim down any overhang of zipper tape. And I'm also trimming down any overhang of the binding. So I just have one nice sheet here. Now we can add the bag tag and you can put this wherever you want. You can put it below the zipper, above the zipper. Just remember above the zipper, it is going to be folded in kind of like this. So you don't have a ton of room. Uh, if you have a bigger tag, go down here. If you have a skinnier kind of longer tag, you can just put it right above the binding. I'm gonna put it on the bottom panel. So I like to just use some double-sided tape to hold it in place. And then just to help make sure you mark the midpoint if you care about it being centered. If you don't, then don't worry about it. And then I just eyeball placement. And now I'm gonna top stitch along all four edges of this at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, and then the last thing I like to do, which is completely optional, but I like to add this little tab. Um, so this is just your two inch by half inch piece of vinyl. And I like to fold it in half. And then the raw edges are gonna go along the left side here. Well, I guess I didn't stitch over that very well. And I'm just going to put it right underneath the bottom binding. Grab a clip to hold it on. And I'm just gonna base this down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm also gonna to try to rebaste my zipper tape over here. All right, if you haven't already, now's a good time to grab a lighter and melt down the edges of your zipper tape. Zipper tape is made out of like a plastic thread. It likes to fray, but if you melt it, it doesn't catch on fire. It just melts and it seals itself so you don't have to worry about it fraying anymore. All right, so now you have your front panel all prepped, ready to go. Make sure the zipper pull is in the center. And you have your back panel, which is pretty boring, but that's fine, it's the back side. So now we're gonna take our two panels and lay them right sides together, line them up. Uh, if one is longer than the other, just make sure the longer edge is on the bottom. So I always like to line up the top first. We don't have a ton of room to lose on the top, so we wanna make sure the top is all good. But on the bottom, if one needs to be trimmed a little bit, that's no big deal. So I'm lining up the corners first, and then I'm gonna clip these right sides together. All right, once you have these all clipped together, now we're gonna sew them together, and you can sew them anywhere between a quarter and a 3 8 inch seam allowance, whichever one you're more comfortable with. I usually like to go for a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Yeah, I'll do that today. I'll do a 3 8 inch seam allowance all the way around. All right, if you're already like, man, that is really sticky, I don't know about this. Let me just remind you that one of the best vinyls to make this bag with is a jelly vinyl. I don't have any on hand to show you, but that's what we made when we did the Bobby Boxy pouch. Uh, a jelly vinyl has a much more matte surface and it's not as sticky. It's very easy to work with. It's a perfect vinyl for this bag. So if this is just a little bit too much for you, um, use the jelly vinyl. If you're finding that you're having a lot of looping on the back and stuff like that, then you need to increase your tension. So make your tension tighter. I forgot to do that, so I do have some looping on the back here, but it's not terrible. It's not enough to damage the structure of the bag. So now we're gonna box these bottoms. So what I'm gonna do is take a ruler and I'm gonna measure one inch from the stitching on the left and one inch up from the stitching on the bottom. And then I'm just going to mark a rectangle using some sort of a marking tool. And then once I have that little box marked, I'm gonna grab some scissors and I'm going to cut it out from the corner. So do this for all four corners. All right, we're reaching the most challenging part now. You can go ahead and open the zipper more if you'd like. Let's start by boxing the bottoms because those will be a little bit easier than the tops. So what we wanna do is we wanna push the corners that are cut away from each other so that the seams come together and then just turn the seams in opposite directions. So the bottom seam for me is gonna go to the left. The side seam is gonna go to the right. If you need to, you push out up here more and that will help flatten out the edge down on the bottom. And you just have to be comfortable creasing this bag. I know you're like, I don't wanna get creases in it. You'll be fine, we'll heat it up when we're done to get the creases out. But for now, we gotta crease it just so we can sew it. All right, so there we go. So I like to put clips down here on the bottom as well to help straighten out that edge. I'm gonna repeat that with the other bottom box corner. When you do this, just make sure that the seam is going in the same direction. So when I look at it this way, the box corner I already clipped, my bottom seam is going towards the right. So when I come over here, I wanna make sure that bottom seam is still going to the right. You don't want the seam to swivel and turn on the bottom. It'll make it so that the bag has a hard time standing upright. All right, now I'm gonna sew along both of these raw edges at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch really well at the beginning and the end. All right, these box bottoms are done. 
Those aren't terribly challenging, but they're not easy either. All right, so for the top, I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. I'm gonna attach one with the clear vinyl, and I'm gonna show you the challenges with that. Uh, and then I'm gonna try another one with cork, because cork is the least sticky of all of the raw edge friendly stuff. Like if you're just starting out and you have a raw edge project, cork is the material you should start out with because it is the easiest to work with. So I'm gonna try one D-ring holder with cork and one with the clear vinyl, and we're gonna see how it goes. So let's do the first one with the clear vinyl. So I'm just gonna thread my clear vinyl onto my D-ring. Let me just put that to the side for just a moment. Let's work on boxing this top here. So you can box it first with clips, and then you're gonna take your connector with the D-ring, and you're gonna insert it so that the D-ring goes into the center of the bag. And then we're gonna want about a three quarter of an inch overhang of our D-ring connector right here. So just get everything lined up, clip in place. All right. Tricky part, we have a lot of layers here. Let's see, we have the seam, which has two layers. We have the vinyl, which is one layer. We have the D-ring, which is another two layers. So let's see, two, four, five, and then we have the one with six layers of clear vinyl here. I don't think it matters what needle you use, it's not gonna be happy. But let's go ahead and sew this on at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. All right, I don't know if you noticed, but I had to use the hand crank quite a bit to get that through. I know, it's a clear vinyl, it's very, very sticky, it's just, if you have an industrial machine, it's probably a breeze. But now I just wanna try, let's use the cork now. So I'm gonna grab a cork piece because I do really think that it's the number of layers of clear vinyl that makes it difficult. It's not impossible, but it makes it difficult. So I'm once again going to just pre-box the top corner and I'm gonna insert the D-ring in the strap. And again, try, try your best. I mean, you really wanna get this centered on the seam. That's gonna be useful for us in the next step. And then about a three quarter of an inch overhang of material. All right, there we go. So now I'm gonna sew this at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once again, back stitching at the beginning and the end. Okay, yeah, that's night and day easier. This is very challenging. This was so much easier. So I will put a, I will put some text up in the beginning saying, if you're worried about that, just use cork, faux leather. Maybe if you have some extra faux leather from this, uh, use something like that instead for these tabs and it's going to be so much easier. Honestly, it looks cooler with the clear vinyl. In my opinion, the clear vinyl looks really cool, uh, but it is very challenging to sew it. Okay, so now what we wanna do is flip this bag right side out. If you are struggling, grab yourself a hairdryer, heat it up with a hairdryer and then flip it. So heat it, flip it a little bit, heat it some more, flip it some more. It's gonna make it much easier. All right, once you get all turned out, how cute is that? Oh, I love these so much. So the next step is actually holding down these straps. I felt like when it was sewn on in this box top over here, I was worried that overuse they would come out. So I like to add a little bit of reinforcement. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I like it. So we're gonna do one side with Chicago screws and one side with rivets. So grab some sort of a marking tool and a ruler. And this is just my method of doing this. So first thing I'm gonna do I'm going to the side here. I put my hand inside the bag behind the seam. I'm not worried so much about the tab yet for the D-ring. I'm just looking at the vinyl side here. So I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna measure half of an inch down from this top D-ring here and then a quarter of an inch to the left of the seam and make a mark. And then I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm once again going to line it up with that seam and I'm gonna measure a quarter of an inch to the right of the seam. So my two dots are half of an inch apart, each a quarter of an inch from that seam. Again, leave the D-ring tab out of the way, grab your hole punch, and punch where you mark those dots. We're gonna probably have to re-punch those holes with a, bigger, with a bigger hole for the Chicago screws. I'll show you that in just a moment. This is just to get started. So now what I do is I flatten out that seam that's right behind these holes, and I push the D-ring down against it. So flatten it out and straighten it. So now the D-ring is pushed against that seam and I can take my marking tool and I mark inside those holes just like this. So I'm marking on the D-ring tab and then I'll flip this corner out a bit so that I can see my D-ring tab and I can see the holes that I marked. And then I will punch through both layers of the D-ring tab. So there's two layers here, right? Cause you folded it in half. I'll punch through both of them. Got it set up, so I've got all my holes punched for that. Now let's see what adjustments we have to make for these screws. 
So you see you have the star side, which goes on the outside, and then you have the back side, which has the screw on it. On the star side, we have a part of the screw, like the receiving side of the screw that sticks up. We want that to be able to go through all the layers of vinyl. So you want to take your hole punch and find which size that's going to work with. So I actually just rotate it around and I just kind of push. Nope, doesn't fit in there. So I'm going to have to use the biggest size on my hole punch. So now I'm going to repunch all my holes with the bigger size so that my screw can fit through the hole without the star going through the hole. So once you have the holes done, let's do a dry fit. We're going to put our star top through the front that fits. And then we're going to push the D-ring tab hole down to meet it and then insert your screw that goes on the back and then just grab your screwdriver and screw it into place. So I call this a dry fit because we're just, we're just kind of loosely doing it. Don't screw it too tight. We just want to make sure it works. All right. Do you see that? Look how cute that is. Isn't that awesome? I love it. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing with the other hole. And remember, I'm going through the side of the bag and I'm also going through the D-ring strap. If you find that it's kind of giving you a bit of a fight and your muscles are all getting all shaky, just take a break, come back to it. If you think if the side seam is getting in your way, just trim it down. You can just shave off a little bit of the side seam right here so that it doesn't get in your way. Okay, so I have it mostly screwed in. Dang, isn't that cute? You guys, these are so cool. I wish I had these before, they're so cool. So now to make sure that they don't come out, I'm going to carefully unscrew one of them, put the screw to the side, try to keep everything lined up, and then grab my glue, and I'm gonna add a little dollop of glue right into the star side of the screw, and then I'm gonna screw the back back in. And that way when the glue dries, this screw is not going anywhere. And now this time, try to get screwed in as tight as you can. There we go. Now repeat that with the other screw. Okay, so those are adorable. Now, um, if you're gonna continue using all four of these, which I think you should because who else does this? This is the cutest thing ever. Um, go ahead and repeat that with the other side. However, we do rivets for our shop, so I'm gonna show you how we do that. Uh, same thing to begin with. I'm going to measure down half of an inch from the top connector here, the seam right on the top of the box corner. And then I'm gonna measure to the left one quarter of an inch and mark a dot. And then I'm going to measure to the right of the seam a quarter of an inch so my dots are half of an inch apart, each a quarter of an inch from the seam. I'm gonna use a smaller hole punch for this. And I'm just gonna punch out those holes only through the side of the bag. I am not worried about my D-ring tab at all right now. And then I'm going to push down that D-ring tab to the side of the bag, just like this. And I'm going to put my marking tool through the holes that I just punched so that I can mark on the D-ring tab. And then just kind of pull out that tab, use your hole punch, and punch where your marks are. Now I'm gonna grab a couple of rivets, and I'm gonna take the side that has the longer bit, and I'm gonna insert that through the side of my bag and then also through the D-ring tab. And then I'll take the backing and just snap it on. So this isn't as cute as the screws, but it is pretty quick if you have the equipment. There we go. And you see, this is why this tool is so handy because I can just open up my zipper, insert this in, get the bottom die to line up with the bottom of the rivet, top die on the top, and then just squeeze it and it, it's very easy. So the rivets are great and this tool is great. If you're gonna be making a lot of these, I mean, this is my job in the Bobby Boxy bags. I put all the rivets on them. Um, it's not like, this is cute. It's not as cute as that, but it is cute. And you can see the clear vinyl as a tab looks really good, but it is so difficult to sew. Uh, so if you wanna use another type of vinyl that's just a little bit easier or cork, I would suggest that. So the bag is now done. All we have to do now is build the crossbody strap. All right, we've made crossbody straps many times on the channel, but I think today I'm gonna do it without rivets, which if you know me, you know, that's always kind of overwhelming. So first thing I'm gonna do is take my strap and I'm going to melt down the edges. This also has a plastic threading, which unravels easily, but it melts nicely. So I'm gonna insert one edge of the strap up through the bottom of my slider and over the middle bar, just like that. And then I'm gonna let it overhang how much? about three quarters of an inch. 
I'm gonna clip it down and now I'm just gonna sew a little rectangle all the way around about an eighth of an inch from the three edges and just as close as I can get it to this bar without hitting it. A zipper foot is helpful for this. Alrighty, so we have that. So lay your strap so that it's the folded over edge to so the back side. Lay it so that that's facing up. Keep your strap nice and straight as so you go all the way over. Take one of your swivels. These are so cute, aren't they? And put it so that the swivel is facing down. So you just have the straight bar up here. If you haven't already, clean up that edge. And now again, keeping everything straight, I'm just pushing the swivel down, straightening out my strap completely. And I'm gonna fold my strap in half, just like this. So back sides together. And I'm going to insert the raw edge of my strap on the same side as the fold over, up over that middle bar, and then down the other side. So when I pull this out, I should have raw edge, right side of my strap slider, pull the way over, and then I have my swivel hanging out just like this. This is what it should look like. Take your remaining swivel, insert it right side up, and then fold over that raw edge about three quarters of an inch and clip in place. And now let's again just go sew a little rectangle an eighth of an inch from all the sides. All right, there you go, your strap is done. You can attach it to your bag. So cute. You can grab the little dangly that's included in the box and attach it right over here if you'd like. I hope you guys love making this. I know you've been asking about it. I hope you love it. All righty guys, what do you think? It's so cute, isn't it? I love the bobby box. So I actually think mine's a little bit smaller here. The first time I did it, I used a quarter inch seam allowance. It's just a tidbit smaller, which is funny because it's it's such a small difference, but you can kind of notice it. So I always prefer a 3 8 inch seam allowance because I feel like if I mess up, it's okay. My mom makes these at a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, either way, look how stinking cute this is. How fun are these little B accents? Uh, if you were hoping to say goodbye to my mom, she got bored and left. <laughs> so she makes she makes so many of these bags. She was like, I'm out. So she told me to tell you goodbye. Thank you so much for the love. It means so much to her. Um, we didn't grow up as bag makers in our house. We weren't even crafters in our house. So for her, a retired Air Force air traffic controller, to now be spending her days sewing these amazing bags, coming up with patterns, coming up with color combinations, I mean, she never would have imagined this would be her life, but honestly, she just goes on and on about how she's never felt more appreciated, more fulfilled than she does right now. So thank you guys so much. I mean, it has like, that has so much to do with you guys, just loving what she's making and loving her patterns. So go make these. Like I said, if you're worried about these corners up here, that is the hardest part of the bag, use cork. Use a faux leather, don't use the clear vinyl. The clear vinyl, in my opinion, looks the best, but if it's gonna just break your needle, stress you out, don't do it. It's gonna look great too with a faux leather or just a, another fun, you know, vinyl. So thank you again to Gabby from Wonderground Fabrics who came up with the bag making bee club. Uh, thank you so much for letting me be a part of this. And we are beyond honored over here that for the first box you guys chose, the Bobby Boxy crossbody. I mean, that just, that means the world to us, really. So thank you. Thank you so much. I hope you guys love making this as much as we do. I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye, guys. I'm not putting this in your face. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the bug. Cover her face. Bebop, 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 bebop. Bebop, 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 bebop. bebop. Should be on this. Cute. <laughs> <laughs> this is a better side. Do you want to go on this side then? <laughs> <laughs> you better switch sides because the lighting is better. She actually prefers this side. Well, I have more hair on this side. <laughs> okay. You got less hair over here. <laughs> Woohoo! Woo! All right, so let's run through this bag real quick. As you can see, get your face back here. No, behind the bag. There we go. This side, this is your, no, the other side. Said this side. Oh, that's your side? That's my side. Oh no, is everything backwards? Oh no. Would you stop looking at me? Look at the camera. <laughs> Scoot. You're talking, I'm looking at you. Look, you're good. Okay, stop looking at me. <laughs> you have so much editing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> you watch my videos, Mom? I do, but I don't pay attention to Dad. <laughs>